Okay, good morning guys. So welcome to our um, fifth module, our fifth section class. So laboratory safety management class. Um, actually, safety is a very long topic. So today what we're going to focus on is biosafety and biosecurity. Yeah, it's yung Latin class. So this is a very timely topic, laboratory safety management, especially class. We are in the midst of a pandemic class. You know, the word pandemic still doesn't sit well in my tongue. Class, sobrang awkward and weird class because nga, dati dinidiscuss ko lang ang pandemic now. We have a pandemic in our midst. Yan. And class, um, working now in the laboratory is riskier than ever. Yan. It's, um, um, it's, Deadly class to work in a laboratory setting. Yeah, and especially we have this SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. So, pag-usapan natin class, yeah. let's explore more about your laboratory safety management. So, first, let's dis discuss, kasi lalabas itong mga term natin all throughout the topic. We have hazards and risk. Yeah. Hazards and risk. So, when we say hazards, so these are your sources of danger. Yeah. Sources of danger, which can be defined is a, as a condition or situation that exists in the work environment that could result in physical harm, injury, and or damage. Yeah. So class hazards, example, if you are a chef, yeah, um, what you always work with are knives. What you always work with is a stove. Yeah. And so this, this can um, result injury to burning, yeah, to cutting yourself. Class, in the laboratory, we have many sources of danger as well. Class, mga ka work workmates, they can, can they be sources of um, danger as well or hazards? Pwede, class, because they can carry this COVID-19 virus. So, yun, hazard is your sources of danger. Next class, risk. Yan, risk relates to exposure to the danger. It relates, palang, uh, relates to exposure to the danger. It's defined, defined as the probability of any injury or loss occurring from a hazard class. So your hazard and risk um, comes together. So they are together. So when you are expo exposed to a hazard, yan, or if a hazard is around you, yan, you have a high probability or you are at risk of becoming injured or harmed. Yan. So my risk. So as much as possible in the laboratory, we are decreasing the probability or we are decreasing the risk for injury. Yan. So class, kaya natin pag-aaralan to kasi gusto natin bawasan yung risk that the, that the laboratory, laboratory workers will be exposed. Yan. Sabi niya dito, the hazardous environment in the laboratory is the perfect setup for accidents. Yeah. And the hazardous environment in the laboratory is perfect setup for an accident. Class, um, hopefully we could com come back to the laboratory. Hopefully we could work, work together in the laboratory. And class, yun, ang raming sources of um, hazards sa, in, sa laboratory environment natin. So, first one dito, we have infectious environment. Example, ano bang mga sources ng mga infection? So, yun, pwedeng ka-work natin yung mga specimens that we are handle people, that we acquire specimen from, body fluids or your specimen, toxic and flammable chemicals class, the reagents that we use, in the laboratory, toxic, and hazardous waste. Class, ang rami natin waste na na-produce sa laboratory. Class, um, the result can be high turnover or la of laboratory staff. Class, if the um, laboratory, laboratory worker feels that they are in high risk, class, alis na sila, tapos hindi pa worth it yung seldo. High turnover, meaning, um, Many laboratory workers will be quitting their job and perhaps they want to go to abroad. Yan. Kasi kahit matas ang risk doon, matas naman sweldo. Diba? Parang ganoon. High stress overwork laboratory staff. Dangerous equipment. Yan. Class, 
your workers with inadequate training and who are reckless class ma classmates na reckless during the laboratory class they can be um, sources of um, hazards class it can be a perfect setup for accidents yeah and class so that's why we're learning this one so we can reduce the risk in the laboratory so we have the different categories of your hazards so we are we have six okay? so we have physical hazards chemical hazards ergonomic radiation biological and psychological to class um, our goal here in this part of the topic so i want you to know how to um, differentiate the different hazards from physical basila radiation psychological ergonomic and the like so magbigay tayo ng examples guys so for your biological hazard so usually these are your viruses bacteria and parasite pwede rin fungi kan so class an ba galing tong mga to yun nga pwedeng sa coworkers pwedeng sa specimen that we handle pwedeng sa patients physical yan class not so yan we have noise vibration temperature and high heat yes we encounter high heat in the use of our water bath our hot plate ganyan. in our use of our different equipment and class ergonomic so most probably marami ngayon lang na encounter yung term na ergonomic hazards so class this hazards um results to usually musculoskeletal strains yan ergonomic hazard are hazard that causes muscle pain yan pain in the wrist in the tendon in the nerves why bakit nangyayari to ma'am example class how the how your workplace is set up sa, sa inyo ba paano in your room paano naka set up yung computer nyo yan Okay ba yung posture nyo while you're working with your homework? Okay ba yung posture nyo pag gumagawa kayo, pag nakaharap kayo sa computer? Plus, same thing with the laboratory workers. They can experience long, hindi, man, hindi nyo man nararamdaman yung mga musculoskeletal pain during this time. But if you're doing it for a long time, for the next Six months, isang semester or so, mararamdaman nyo yung pain sa muscles nyo kung class, yung work environment nyo, hindi nakaset up para sa tamang posture, sa para, tamang position. So, same thing with your laboratory. So, we call this ergonomic hazards. Ergonomic hazards, guys, results to musculoskeletal injury and pain. So, how does this happen? Example, work area layout. Yan. Sample your work area layout, class the table are so low. Yan, masyadong mababa. Ganyan. Yan, that does not, that allows na the work area layout, yung ano mo na shoulders, you are hunching when you are working, something like that. Equipment design. So, and instrument layout. So, class, it's very important in the laboratory that it should be well laid out and well organized. Example, class, the mentech is always using the microscope. But it would be a problem, class, if every day the medical technologist is keeping the microscope in a high cabinet area. In an area where, in a high cabinet, in a cabinet where it is it is high and, and the medical technologists always need to uh, use a, a stool or stair to get the microscope. Yan, class, it can, for a, for if you're doing it for a long time, yan, it can cause musculoskeletal strains. Class, i-apply nyo rin yung pinag-aaralan natin. So, make sure, class, that if you're going to watch a video, you will do an assignment. Class, ano, tama yung pagka-layout. Ayusin yung layout. Add pillows to your back. Ganyan. Kung masyadong mataas yung ano nyo, yung table nyo, taasan nyo rin. Lagyan nyo ng um, pillow under your seat. Parang ganun, class. Yan. Ayusin yung layout nyo. Ha? Para hindi kayo magkaroon ng musculoskeletal strain and stretch. Next, chemical or chemical substances. So, class, exposure to cyanide, caustic acids, and lead. Yeah. But, class, usually we don't use this in the laboratory. What we use are reagents. Ganyan. Reagents that are 
found in the laboratory, class radiation, so ultraviolet exposure from the sun. Class, we use ultraviolet um, light to disinfect our laboratory and so excessive ultraviolet um, exposure, infrared from di drying or heating. Psychological class, so psychological are also hazard. So yeah, we have to protect our mental health. So if there is excessive workload, yeah. If the shift arrangement, if the working shift, so class usually when I was working in the laboratory, among work shift, um, eight to five, three p.m. to three p.m. to eleven p.m. Yeah, and mga gabi, 11 to 7, 11 p.m. to 7. So, ganun yung mga shifts class. And class, if the shift is very um, difficult for the, uh, it's difficult for the um, worker, then, ayun, it can result to a psychological harm or injury, workplace violence class. Pag nag sa laboratory. Yan. So, guys, why do we have to study laboratory? Safety, because it has psychology. So, class number one, it affects the morale and threaten the emotional health of the party involved. Class, if you do not feel safe, yan. Pag hindi, pag sa, sa working place mo, or kahit saan ka man nakatira, kung hindi ka feel safe, if you, hindi ka feel safe, if you don't feel safe, class, it will affect um your morale, yan, your motivation. Next, injuries are exposed expensive in terms of loss and medical treatment and injuries are expensive class and actually injury and death class are expensive and death is priceless actually so yun we want everyone to be safe yan the laboratory workers and the people who work there and the environment and the public class injuries Im impair the ability to serve yan. ganda so, kailangan ng laboratory safety. So, class, laboratory safety is not only the responsibility of the chief medical technologist, is not only the responsibility of the pathologist in the laboratory. So, if we are in school, laboratory safety is not only the responsibility of the teacher, but each one of us. Yeah. And so, dapat we should be um, alert. Yeah. Dapat alam natin kung anong nangyayari sa paligid natin. And it's our responsibility that I know we have to ensure safety. Next class. So here are the agencies that issue guidelines or standards. Yeah. So class in your module, homework niyan. So meron don. So read what's the meaning of AABB. Yeah. CDC, ISO. Yeah. Kanina class sa radio narinig ko ISO certified. Yeah. Yeah. And CLSI. So, please, in your module, or if not, Google it, anong ibig sabihin itong mga agencies na to? So, class, these agencies are very important. They set our standards. They set our guidelines. Yan. To be followed by the different laboratories. Actually, yung DOH class, they also get their guidelines from CLSI. Yung DOH, nakuha rin nilang guidelines na sa WHO. Yan. So, these agencies are very important. They set the guidelines, the standards. So, AABB, so, ang focus nila sa blood banking. Class CDC, for hospitals and laboratories, primarily, primarily related to infection control and safe work practices. CDC is in the U.S. class yet. So, that ay pangarap ko rin mag ano na work dyan sa CDC. Now, I'm watching the news and CDC is actually under fire. Yan. Ano sila? Um, they are going criti criticize right now the CDC in their action against COVID-19 in the US kasi ang taas nga ng cases eh. ISO class, so it's not only focus on hospitals and, la and laboratories but class, almost all goods and services. Sa Gardenia, nakita ko ISO siya. But class hospitals can also be ISOs. Yan. And class, we have CLSI. So standards on all aspects of laboratory practice. So class, kung focused, if focus sa laboratory practices, they are the one who make standards. CLSI yun. Ha? CLSI yun. Pag AABB, 
plus the blood banking section lang. Yan. CDC, hospitals, and laboratories, especially in the management of infectious diseases, ISO class, um, it regulates, it standardizes um, all different industries. So, pwedeng hospitals, pwedeng manufacturing, yan. pwedeng corporations, CLSI, clinical lab, so all the section. Okay. So class, another one is OSHA. OSHA, so Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Don't forget this. Um, agency, OSHA. So class, OSHA protects the health of workers. Yeah, the health of workers. Workers working in the laboratory, workers in the construction site, workers in the um, universities, class, lahat ng workers. So, um, and it ensures safety of all workers in areas, enforces regulations for workers if the response to complaints of non-compliance of regulations. So, class, um, the intention of OSHA is to protect the health of, of the different workers, not only health workers, class. Galing, galing, galing. So, class, you know, nagkaroon kami ng patient back then nung nag-work pa ako sa hospital, merong construction worker class, nataganan siya ng isang gumuhong part ng construction nila. Grabe. So, yun, class, ang tawag doon, nagkaroon siya ng crush injuries. Yan, crush injuries. So, nalamog yung liver niya, yung mga internal organs niya. Yan. So, class, pwede siyang magsampa ng kaso sa OSHA. So, class, um, your OSHA, so to protect the laboratory workers, yan, they made standards. They made, uh, they made standards sa pang laboratory to, class, or who are exposed to such, um, to such um, hazards. Ito, re respiratory protection hazard, eye protection standard, hazard communications, occupational exposure to hazard hazardous chemicals, bloodborne pathogen standard, and formal dehyde standard. So, they set the guidelines on how to protect the laboratory workers from bloodborne pathogens from excess formal dehyde. So, class formal dehyde is used to preserve our tissues in the histopathology section. Yeah. And class, there is such thing as overexposure or overinhalation of formaldehyde. So, class, gumawa sila ng standard. Yan. So, class, for respiratory protection standard, so, sabi nila, sabi ng OSHA, so, you need a respiratory protection plan. Example, kanyari, there should be the presence of a ventilator, um, ventilator, ano? Ventilator. <gasps> Tawag din. Class, um, something that will facilitate the airflow in the laboratory class what else hazard communication standard and hazard communication so the employers needs to communicate need to needs to inform the workers on the different hazards and actually kailangan nilang i-train so hazard communication standard so the employees have the right to know what are the hazards which are present in that environment. Plus occupational exposure ha to hazardous chemicals in the laboratory. So class dapat the my chemical hygiene plan. So plan no on how to protect the workers in the laboratory against chemical hazards. So proper storage class, yeah, proper storage. Dapat may mga nakakandado, ganyan. And class, actually, there should be also a limit on how much chemical we can only store, ganyan. Class, back then, in the, back in the University of Baguio, um, class, we had a guard in our central supply um, room, central supply room. So, in the central supply room, it is where, it is where all our chemicals are stored, ganyan. In class PIDEA, PIDEA required University of Baguio to have a security guard on our CSR so as um, yun, to protect the public against people who are making illicit drugs. Kasi class yung mga chemical na nasa CSR natin, pwede na tayong gumawa ng mga illegal na droga. 
Ganyan. So, may proper way dapat to store it, to protect it. Dapat hindi pwede basta-basta lahat pumasok. Yan, dapat may mga labels, class, ganon. Ganon yung mga, mga pinapa... May labels, <laughs> mga um, guidelines that your OSHA um, implements. Um, what else, class? We have this term, MSDS. MS DS, MSDS class, Material Safety Data Sheet. Material Safety Data Sheet. So class, every chemical in the laboratory may MSDS yan. Material Safety Data Sheet. Class, and don lahat ng information about that chemical. So example, if there is spillage, how to manage the spillage, and what if um, there is an exposure. May mga first aid dun sa MSDS na nun. Lahat ng pwede mong malaman sa isang chemicals na dun nakasulat sa MSDS. So, kasama yun sa chemical hygiene plan. Class, what else? We have blood-borne pathogen standards. So, class, your OSHA has implemented stringent work practices and procedures to minimize worker exposure to blood-borne Pathogen. Of course, mahaba tong mga standards na to. Ano lang natin, class? Uh, we're just exploring it. Tinatouch lang natin. And class, we have formaldehyde standards. So, we are monitoring the formaldehyde exposure. Yeah. So, there should be engineering controls which are available. Personal protective equipment for the people who are um exposed to formaldehyde and training, ganyan, and emergency action plans just in case there are excessive spillage of your formaldehyde, ganyan. Tapos, class, may tamang pagtapon na rin ng formaldehyde. So, class, um, these are your um, different clinical specimens. So, the specimens, class, especially if they have blood, they, there are visible, they are blood, um, in this specimen class, this can be our sources of biological hazards. Ayan. So, specimens that are potentially infectious. So, blood, pus, pus yan class, purulent fluids. So, pur purulent fluids means um, specimen with pus, semen, vaginal secretions. CSF or cerebrospinal fluid, so fluid um, that cautions your spinal cord up to your brain. Um, we have pleural flu fluid, so fluid that are found in between your um, lungs. Peritoneal fluid, so nasa cavity natin, abdominal cavity or thoracic cavity. Pericardial fluid, so in the uh, fluid that surrounds your heart, kasi peri. Amniotic fluid, yan. So, fluid that serves as a um, medium for the baby, yan, amniotic fluid. So, class, um, kumakain yung bahay ng balot? So, yung sabaw doon ng balot. So, that's your amniotic fluid, yan. And breast milk or colostrum. Specimens that are usually not infection and infectious, infectious and less visibly bloody. So, we have feces, nasal, secretion, sputum, sweat, tears, urine, vomitus, vomitus, suka. Sputum, class, is the mucus that is coming from your lungs. Yan, turkak. <laughs> class, so, causes of laboratory exposures. So, saan ba galing ang mga, ano, bakit na-expose ang isang laboratory worker or the environment? Number 20% class is due to equipment failure. There is a breach in the equipment or engineering controls. Kunyari class, so nasira yung ano mo, biosafety cabinet. So your biosafety cabinet protects the... Per Depende sa level class, there are different types of biosafety cabinet. But the goal of biosafety cabinet is it wants to protect the person and also the product. So, example, if you are doing culture and sensitivity, you want to, syempre, ayaw mo expose itong agar mo ng ibang bacteria pa. So, yun, it protects the um, person, it protects the environment, and it also protects the product. So, class, if there's breach in the equipment, ganyan. So, 20% ang resulta nun. So, 20% of the laboratory exposure is from the breach of equipment or equipment failure. 
Next class is 80% now is human factors. Yeah. So class, if the person are not well trained, ganyan. So if they're not correctly wearing your PPE, class example sa COVID-19. Itong mga laboratory workers natin, class, we, we, they are, they have the PPE naman. But class, if they are not, um, rem, class, ang, yung, ang isang cause ng exposure sa kanila is pag hindi nila tinatanggal, hindi sila maingat sa pagtanggal ng PPE. Yan. So, yun. The donning of your PPE um, can result to um, COVID-19 exposure. So, dapat very careful siya sa pagtanggal ng PPE nila. Plus, when they're non-compliant to policies, yan. Example, no eating in the lab and they're not washing their hands properly. So, class, it's about human factor. So, it's very important that we're really taking the time to talk about this one. Kasi nga, if the people are not well-trained or, or do not have the working knowledge to work in a laboratory, di ba, class, it can result to, ano, to, to injury. Yan. So, class, now, we are in our laboratory acquired infections. Yan, laboratory, wait lang, pause muna natin. Okay, these are infection, symptomatic or asymptomatic, that are acquired through laboratory or laboratory-related activities as, a, as the result of working with infectious agents. So, class, um, in the laboratory, it's inevitable that we are going to work with patients, we are going to work with specimens. Yan. In class, if we're not careful, class, we could have laboratory-acquired infections. So, these are infections that are, um, that we can get if we are working in the laboratory. So, example, class, itong image na to. So, class, this man is has a scrofula scrofula s c r o f u l a scrofula so scrofula is a mass that you can get if you have tuberculosis class since we are working with sputum and sputum specimen so um the mucus specimen that is coming from your lungs and you can actually um uh, be exposed to the aerosols of your sputum. Yan. Pwede ka magka-TB. You can have scrofula. And what else, class? Itong patient na to. So, meron siyang oral thrush. Oral thrush. So, O-R-A-L space thrush. T-H-R-U-S-H. Yan. Thrush. So, actually, class, so your oral thrush is a, is a complication already or a sequelae of your HIV infection. Yan. So, class, pag may HIV ka, syempre humihina yung immune system mo. And now, this fungal um, diseases is trying to um, trying to come out kasi um, the immune system is so weak na lumalabas na itong mga fungal diseases. So, this one is caused by your um, candida or Candida albicans. Yan, candida albicans. So, it causes oral thrush. Yan. So, class, what are the routes? So, how could you be exposed to your laboratory-acquired infection? Number one, ingestion, class. So, if you are eating in the workplace, yan. So, or if your food was contaminated with something in the workplace. So, through ingestion. Next, inoculation. So, inoculation is when you will be pricked by a needle which has blood already or you will be, will be scratched or bitten by an animal if you're working in a laboratory research facility. Ayan. Tapos, ano pa? Yun, at makagat ka ng mga um, mosquito, makagat ka ng tick, if you're working with animals in the laboratory. Yan. Contamination. So, contamination. So, usually, so when a specimen comes in contact with your skin. Yan. So, if you were not protected with your um, PPE class, yan, contamination yan. And class, we have inhalation. So, example, yun, pag sa tuberculosis, 
So, act of drawing air and our other substances into the lung. So, these are your routes of laboratory exposure. So, this can be the mode of transmission of your um, your uh, your pathogens. Again. So, simulan natin magbigay tayo ng mga example. So, number one, ingestion. So, usually class, this, these are the diseases which are transmitted through fecal oral and fecal oral diseases. So, pag sinabi natin fecal oral diseases, so example is when your food or your water was contaminated by stool or feces. Yan. So, class, we are working in a laboratory and we handle feces or stool. Class, pwede itong mga stool. Class, if you, the medic is not careful, pwede kumalat sa microscope, pwede punta under the fingers, ganyan. So, yun, example tayo. So, amebiasis, which is caused by entamoeba histolytica. We have typhoid fever caused by salmonella, typhi, class. We have bacillus subtilis. Class, please, pakibig letter yung ano. Pakibig letter yung letter B. Yan. Bacillus subtilis, class. So, so this is, this causes, um, ano yan? This is Bacillus subtilis is also called as the fried rice bacillus, fried rice bacillus. So class pag iniwan mo yung fried rice mo for a very long time, ayun pwede ka magkaroon ng Bacillus subtilis. Yan, we have Georgiasis. Yan, from the first discussion, so it's caused by Georgia, Lamblia. We have hepatitis A. So hepatitis A is a viral infection. And among the hepatitis family class, ito lang ang natara-transmit through ingestion. Yan. And we have polio virus class. Polio is actually when food is contaminated with stool. Yan. So, pwede ka rin magka-polio. So, class, ang sobrang harmful ng polio because it can result to um, paralysis. So, polio, hepatitis class. So, these are caused by your virus. Yan. Entamoeba histolytica is caused by a protozoa. Georgiasis is caused by a um, parasite or protozoa. We have Bacillus subtilis and typhoid fever bacteria yan class. Next class. So, inoculation. So, inoculation, so example ng laboratory acquired infection through inoculation, we have blood-borne diseases. Yan. So, how? Ma'am, paano? So, if you were pricked by a, a needle which, were, which was already used, so apparently yung patient either may HIV, hepatitis B, or hepatitis C, naku, Yan, wag naman siya na, sabi ng teacher ko, guys, yun, sabi niya, protect, when I was in college, teacher ko nagsabi, when you're in college, yan, I, when I was in college, sabi niya, protect yourself from HIV, ganyan. Ang sad naman, pag magkaka-HIV kayo, na hindi nyo man na-enjoy yung, ano, <laughs> yung cause, sabi niya. So, boring yon pag needle prick lang daw, nagka-HIV ka, sabi niya. What else, class? Animal bites caused by rabies. Rabies is a virus. Class, na oh, ang bilis ko alat ng rabies. Kaya, please, pag kinagat kayo ng aso, pa-injection kayo. We have vector-borne diseases. Yan. So, when we say vector-borne diseases, these are diseases wherein it needs a vector. Yan. So, usually, these vectors are mosquitoes. So, example, guys, we have Aedes aegypti. So, Aedes aegypti is a common mosquito here in the Philippines. And what's harmful, class, this Aedes aegypti can carry three different virus, class, dengue virus, chikungunya, and Zika virus. I think, hopefully, please search, you've heard Zika virus. I think 2017, yan, nagkaroon ng outbreak ng Zika virus in Brazil and Singapore. And class, this virus, um, it results to microencephaly. Microencephaly. So, micro, small, encephaly, brain, yan. It causes microencephaly among babies, yan. If they're 
if the pregnant woman was bitten by a um, Aedes aegypti mosquito which carries Zika, pwede magkaroon ng microencephaly ang baby. Grabe. So, chikungunya is actually a mild form of dengue. Yan, milder siya. Next, we have tick bites. Tick. Tick bites. Anong garapata? Yan, Tagalog niya. <laughs> and class, example of ticks are your... your uh, Tick bites. So, some ticks class carry this bacteria, Yersinia pestis. Yan, Yersinia pestis. Class, class, it causes black plague. <laughs> Natawa ko dito, yan. Black plague lang yung nilagay ko. Class, black plague. Yan, black plague. So, back then, we had an epidemic of black plague. Yan, dati pa to. So, it is caused by a rat, actually. Itong rat na to, meron siyang tick or garapata. Itong mga tick na to, class, meron nagkikerry ng Yersinia pestis bacteria, which causes black plague. Class, galing no? Ganun nila, ganun katindi yung uh, mode of transmission ng black plague. Yan, class, please, yan, if you have extra time, why not search for black plague, kung anong nangyari sa black plague. And we have Lyme diseases, yan. So, those who are fond of hunting in the US, class, hunting deers, ganyan. And this deers, class, um, have ticks which carries bacteria which results to Lyme disease. Yan. Lyme, spelling L-Y-M-E. We also have contamination. So when the medical technologist is not wearing their PPE well or improperly or they are reusing their PPE, pwede silang makakontaminate sa skin nila. So, we have boils caused by Staphylococcus aureus. We have pimples, class. Marami akong co-work na nagkakaroon ng, or when I was an intern, marami nagkakaroon ng pimples when we were working in microbiology section. Yan, due to propan, propioni bacterium acnes. We have fungal infections like ringworm and virus like herpes. Yan. And class, inhalation. So, tuberculosis. We have caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. We have common flu caused by your rhinovirus. Plus, if you're if the if the people in the laboratory were working with rhinoviruses, coronavirus, pwede ka magkaroon ng common flu. But class now, the virus corona virus can other forms is SARS, MERS-CoV, and SARS-CoV-2, which results to COVID-19. And we have anthrax class. So anthrax back then class was used in bioterrorism. So your anthrax class came from your Bacillus anthracis spores. Itong bacteria na to class may spores siya. At pag na-inhale mo tong spores na to class, you know, you can easily die. And the disease that is caused by Bacillus anthracis, we call it, we call it as anthrax. Back in 2001 ata, or 2003, it was used in bioterrorism wherein these people class were putting spores in the U.S. mail. Yan. Sa mga sobre class, naglalagay sila ng spores. So pag binuksan mo yun at inamoy mo, magkakaroon ka ng anthrax caused by Bacillus anthracis. And now guys, we're almost done. Onti na lang class. We have... <laughs> Ito na yung, ano, ito na yung, um, ito na yung um, pinnacle ng laboratory safety. Hindi tayo magpo-focus. Biosafety versus biosecurity. Yan. So, class, in this image, yan, this is a biohazard label. Yan. So, dapat pag nakita mo na yan, so, pwede ka me, this shows that there is a biohazard, um, biohazard that is present in the area. So, we have these two terms, class. Biosafety and biosecurity. So, when we say, guys, biosafety, so application of safety and containment measures to minimize or prevent exposure from infectious agents to the person handling it in the lab building occupants and environment. Your biosafety, its purpose is to prevent the accidental release 
of these bugs, yan, these microorganisms, and protect the worker from bad, bad bugs. Plus, biosafety as much as possible. We are protecting the workers who are, who are working in the laboratory so that they will not be exposed to this harmful microorganism. But class, we also have biosecurity. And biosecurity. So when we say biosecurity, so institutional security measures, so para sila, safety and containment measures eh, designed to prevent the loss, the misuse, diversion, intentional or deliberate release of pathogens prevents the deliberate release of these microorganisms protect the bugs from bad workers yeah so class when we talk about biosecurity class some people have harm harmful intent ito mga taong to class may mga tao na um, they have malicious intent to misuse these pathogens. Gusto nilang magkalat ng pathogens. That's why we have to set certain security measures to prevent these people from delib deliberately releasing this microorganism. So, class for biosecurity, as much as possible, dito natin um, um, pre pre prevent ang bio terrorism yan so wherein people are using biological tools to wreak havoc yan for biosafety class so so far yung mga workers naman dito walang masamang intentions we are helping the workers we are protecting the workers against the harmful microorganisms yan so class ang focus natin sa topic na to dito sa first grading is bio safety. But guys, di ba, maganda rin tong biosecurity. Example, since hindi muna natin madidiscuss to, dapat yung mga workers in the laboratory, gumagawa tayo ng background check. Yan. So, example, sa Wuhan, class, ang raming conspiracy about COVID-19. Yan. And, wag na natin pag-usapan yung mga conspiracy yan. But, kunyari, if they're they were experimenting nga uh, with COVID-19. Dapat nakalak itong area ng to. Dapat no one can pass through it. Dapat may mga cameras, may guard, ganyan. Dapat secured, may mga locks. So, yun. For your biosecurity. So, we will focus our strength first in biosafety. <laughs> and so, what are the concepts in biosafety? So, class, dapat yung mga processes, yung mga equipments, yung mga standards, class, dapat they are in place yan, to protect the workers, the environment, and the public. So, number one, standard microbiologic practices. So, class, we need to train our health workers, our laboratory workers to... In, to strictly adhere to the practices example proper hygiene proper um, sterilization of the microorganisms proper disposal and plus marami next class we are giving them the safety safety equipments yeah so we are giving them the barriers yan, primary containment barrier yan to protect to give a barrier from the uh, microorganism to minimize the exposure, yan. to prevent contact and to contain the aerosols. So, class, especially, example, nag-centrifuge tayo, pinapaikot natin yung specimen, yan. so there are aerosols. So, class, ang uso ngayon is they are making acrylic ba barrier, yung parang plastic, acrylic ba barrier. So, if you're going to the stores, di ba may barrier yun? Dapat nga hindi plastic, yun nga acrylic yung ginagamit nilang material. So, what else? We give the workers PPE. We give them biological safety cabinet. So, in the safety cabinet, this is the area where they will work and we will contain the bacteria. Hindi lalabas doon. What else? Class, dapat meron rin ganito. Facility, design, and construction. So, designing the lab in such a way that we are limiting the access of people to microorganisms. Example sa laboratory, saan mo ilalagay yung microbiology um, section mo? 
class sa tabi ba ng reception? Doon mo ilalagay yung microbiology um, section mo. Siyempre, class sa likod ng ano, sa likod ng um, building or sa likod ng laboratory. Hindi mo ilalagay sa harap because it will expose other people to micro organisms. Yan. So, the, how you design the laboratory, the presence of ventilation class. Actually, there is a set time for ventilation. Yan. Dapat malakas yung ventilation. We have autoclaves. So, these autoclaves are like, like pressure cooker which disinfect our equipment. Yan. In class, we have biosafety levels. One to four. Pag-aaralan natin yung biosafety levels. Yan. So, class, we have this term as universal precautions. Yan, universal precautions is, a, is an approach to infection control to treat all human blood and body fluids as if they are known to be infectious for HIV, hepatitis B, and other blood-borne pathogens. So, universal precautions class is an approach to infection control is to treat all human blood and body fluids as if they are infectious. Class, kahit um, human blood pa yan, ni mama mo, or ng crush mo, or ni, um, ni James Reed, or ni Nadine Lustre class, so, um, treat, treat them as if they are infectious. Yan. So, kahit kakilala mo, sa kakilala mo, yung specimen na hawak mo, class, treat them as if they are infectious. Okay? So, class, um, it's very important in the biosafety that we have prevention. So, example, yung mga workers natin, so we give them annual tuberculosis skin test and x-ray and every five years. We give them hepatitis vaccine. Plus, if there's an accident which happens, so we have to make an accident or incident report. Plus, I experienced this in the laboratory. May dalawang sojanti ako nasunog yung skin nila due to exposure to a highly corrosive um, reagent. So, I have to make an incident no report yan why it happened and how and next time how could i reduce that um that circumstance to be happening again in class we have post exposure prophylaxis so class kung natusok ka ng needle na nagamit na kunare positive yun sa hiv yan it's not the end of the road so meron pa tayong post exposure prophylaxis so simply report what happened Yan, um, inform your supervisor at bibigyan kayo ng prophylaxis, injection ng kayo ng post-exposure prophylaxis. Yan. So, para hindi kumalat yung HIV or hepatitis B. Yan. So, class, we are now in your biosafety or containment levels. So, class, depending on the type of your laboratory, iba-iba rin yung biosafety or containment levels. So, class, if um, depende sa microorganism na, um, na, na we work or ginagamit sa isang facility, ganun katindi yung biosafety level. So, the more harmful, the more infectious, the more in exotic the, vi the virus or bacteria that we are experimenting on or processing in the laboratory class, the higher the containment level. And the more stringent the practices, the more expensive the facility and the equipment will be if we are working on more dangerous um, microorganisms. So guys, the higher the risk, the higher the biosafety levels. Yan. So, biosafety or containment level, it is used to identify the protective measures needed in a laboratory setting to protect workers, the environment, and the public. So, these are protective measures. So, class, hindi lang isa, marami to. So, what are these protective measures, ma'am? So, these are the laboratory practices and procedures class. So, dapat may standard and protocols na pinafollow. 
we have safety equipments that are available in class we need to equip the facility with the correct um, materials and safety equipment so class so pag bio safety level 1 so you are just use um, working on um, microorganisms which are not really causing diseases so the risk is there's no risk though but the higher you go so bio safety level 2 you work on specimen which has missile virus tumataas yung ano yung risk yan so pag tumataas yung risk less mas nagiging harmful yung bacteria na ano na we no work on mas mata mas mataas dapat yung bio safety level yan so yan ang pag-usapan natin so bio safety level 1 when you are working with microorganisms that are not known to cause disease in healthy humans. So, example is baker's yeast, brewer's yeast, yan yung mga harmless, yung mga lactobacillus, sirota strain from our yakol, then yan, mga minor lang na microorganism that which causes disease by safety level 1 lang. So, the practices, safety equipment, and facility design are appropriate for undergraduate and secondary education training and teaching laboratory. So, usually class, mga bachelor's degree, biosafety level 1 lang class, but except in medical technology. Kasi class, we are handling specimens. So, actually, biosafety level 2 tayo sa clinical laboratory natin. Yan. So, class, if it's a high school level, ganyan, senior high level, undergraduate bachelor, pero hindi medtech class. Um, yan, by safety level 1. So, class, anong, pag by safety level 1, okay, okay na, basta naka-laboratory coat, may eye protection, may fume hood. Yan. Class, fume hood is actually um, to, to manage the fumes that are coming from the reagent. Class, fume hood, it will not actually protect you from microorganisms. Yan. Ito yung pinakamababang safety cabinet natin. So, may lab coat, eye protection. If you are working on an open space, okay na yan sa biosafety level 1. Yan. So, itong mga to, tabi-tabi sila, class, chika-chikahan, walang mask. Yan. Biosafety level 1 lang. Pang school level. Yan. Next class, biosafety level 2 now. Yan. We're diving into a more serious environment. So, class, your biosafety level 2 are applicable to your clinical diagnostic teaching. Ayun nga yung gagawa natin sa laboratory. So, dapat biosafety level 2 tayo and other laboratories. So, hospitals, laboratory hospitals class are usually BLS2. We are working with indigenous moderate risk agents that are present in the community. Example, hepatitis B and HIV. And class associated with human disease carrying severity. Class here, we should be using biosafety cabinet, class 1 or class 2 with your personal protective equipment. Yan, BLS2. So class sa mga laboratory sa Baguio, sa Pangasinan, if you're a laboratory, a clinical laboratory, nagtatest sila ng blood glucose, ng dugo, class dapat BLS2 sila at dapat meron silang biosafety cabinet. Class, as you go higher to your BLS um, 3 and 4, class, pamahal ng pamahal. Yan, pamahal ng pamahal. And class, to work with this COVID-19, ang requirement nila actually is biosafety level 3. Dapat, para makahandle ng COVID-19 specimen, dapat biosafety level 3 ka. Um, ideally, Pero class sa Pilipinas class, masyadong mahal mag-implement um, ng biosafety level 3 facility. So what they did is they made their existing biosafety level 2 plus. Yan. So class in the Philippines, if you're working with COVID-19, you're a PCR laboratory, okay na or you're a hospital example BGH nag-work ka ng COVID-19 okay na na BLS 2 plus ka yan so same criteria with biosafety level 2 
but can work with BL BSL-3 microorganisms. So now you can handle um, more um, more dangerous <laughs> microorganisms. Yan, pag BLS-2 ka. But class, pag BLS-2 plus ka, syempre, tinaasan nilagyan mo, dinagdagan mo yung um, safety precautions mo compared to 2 lang. Yan. So, 2 plus. So, the precautions for 2 plus is a bit stringent. Yan. Stricter when compared to walang plus. So, class. So, notice they are wearing their mask. We are working in a biosafety cabinet po ito. Ayan. So, when we are using biosafety cabinet too, we are actually protecting both the product and the human. Ayan. So, if you're working with biosafety cabinet class, meron tong filter which, ayan, which filters out the air. So, it will also release clean air. Ayan. So, next, BLS3 and BS, BLS3+. Plus. So, same thing. Pag BS, BLS3+, plus, you can work with um, BSL for microorganism. You can work with um, Ebola. So, to class BLS3, usually, mga TB dots natin kasi BLS3 is sa mga microorganisms na ginagamit na tinatas usually is tuberculosis because Agents which may cause serious or potentially lethal disease as a result of exposure by inhalation route. So, your TB, your SARS-CoV-2 class, kailangan dapat ang ideal class BLS3. But class, this is expensive. So, applies to clinical diagnostic teaching research or production facilities which works with indigenous and exotic agents with potential respiratory transmission class anthrax BLS3 yan may cause serious or potentially lethal infection so class ang bilis kasi ng inhalation route route <laughs> route so yan class so BSL3 plus so handles microorganism for BSL4 but the equipment is BSL3 however the processes the practices are more stringent and they should strictly adhere to these protocols. So, what should be present? Yan, hindi lang may fume hood, but may autoclave, may biosafety cabinet, solid front gowns. Yan. So, the ka overall na PPE sila. We have biohazard signs and waste container present. And something like this, class. So, naka-overall na PPE sila with the shoes. We are using a biosafety cabinet. Yan, two. Ayan. Na kung four. Yan. So, class, four, four. Sini yung four ko? Ito. So, four, four, class. So, life-threatening, ano, Infectious diseases sa biosafety level 4 class. So, you need a biosafety cabinet. 3 dito. Grabe, naka-full. Ano talaga sila. And they also have a respirator or oxygen container. So, class, relation of risk groups to biosafety levels practices. So, class, this is just a summary. So, pag biosafety level 1, so, you need good microbiological practices. Usually, mga basic teaching and research, laboratory, safety equipment, usually open bench. Yan, open workspace lang. Next, we have biosafety level 2. Ito, mga health services, primary health services, mga hospital, mga clinical lab. You need good microbiological techniques. Plus, wear your PPE with biohazard sign. Yan. Open bench tayo, but we need biosafety cabinets as well. Containment level 3 or biosafety 3. So, special diagnostic services, example, for tuberculosis, class for anthrax, for COVID-19. As level 2 plus special clothing, controlled access, directional airflow, biosafety cabinets as well, maximum containment, biosafety level 4. So class, these are dangerous pathogen units. So these are the research 
um, facilities which handles your Ebola, itong mga, um, pwede rin class COVID-19. Yan, actually, hindi pa nga nila um, na-establish kung ano talaga yung level of harm, level of risk ng, ano, ng COVID-19. As level 3 plus airlock entry class, ganun ka tindi. Airlock entry, shower exit, special waste disposal. We use class 3 biosafety cabinets with positive pressure suits. So, ito yung ginagamit niya. Positive pressure suits, double-ended autoclaves, and filtered air. Ayan. So, ang galing, no, class? So, so far, when I, would, I had a seminar class, um, meron dito sa Pilipinas up to biosafety level 3 lang tayo. Ayan. So, in UP, I think UP Manila, meron silang biosafety level 3 facility. Ayan. <coughs> Ayan, no, grabe. So, class, um, ano to? Ba dito? Ito, yung mga example lang na mga hinahandle. So, Ecoli class. Ay, meron ako dun. So, class, um, you can ano, screenshot this. Parang summary, summary rin lang. Maximum containment, high containment. Okay. So, example. So, pag biosafety level 1, mga hinahantal, lactobacilli, breweries. So, hand hygiene, hand hygiene lang. Salm BSL2, HIV, Salmonella, Hepa B, BSL3, TB. Um, St. Louis encephalitis, Coxia laburnati, COVID-19. Your COVID-19 can be in BSL-3 and 2+. BSL-4, <coughs> Ebola, Marsburg, Zika, MERS-CoV, SARS. Also COVID-19, BSL-4. Pero class, yung minimum na, na pwede mag-handle ng COVID-19 is BSL-2+. Yeah. So class, these are the risk groups. So your risk groups will um will tell how risky are are, are our um, pathological agents. So the higher the risk group class, the more dangerous our um pathologic agents. Yeah. So yung mga malatas, Ebola, Marburg, Lassa. We have risk group 3, mycobacterium tuberculosis, ito anthrax, HIV, risk group 3. Class, magkaibang risk group sa biosafety level. Sa risk groups are the groupings of your pathologic agent based on the risk. Subtilis, um, risk group 1, Escherichia coli, K12, adeno-associated virus, risk group 1, Yan, and tooth, and ito. So class, um, as a guide, you can download this app. Kanina may banggit ako sa, sa chemical hygiene plant, plan na MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet. So this um, document tells all the things that you have to know about your chemical. Class, same thing. We have this app, which is Pathogen Safety Data Sheet. Pathogen Safety Data Sheet. So in this app, um, with just a click of your finger, makikita nyo na ang lahat ng pwedeng matutunan about aerococcus species, yan, about HIV, about salmonella, yan, about COVID, SARS-CoV-2, how the explanation of the infectious agent, hazard dissemination, stability, first aid, handling and storage, yan, malaman nyo lahat yan sa PSDS. So class, um, before we finish our first grading, so here, just, here are just a few common decontaminants according to McPherson and uh, Henry. So 10% bleach. So class, you don't need a 90% bleach concentration or 100%, 10% okay na. So we have 10% Lysol as well. We have heat, ethylene oxide, 2% glutaraldehyde, 10% hydrogen peroxide, 10% formalin or formaldehyde. We have phenols, UV ionizing reagent, and photooxidation. And of oh, the first grading, guys, God bless the examination nyo, and I'll see you sa second grading. <laughs>